Okay, so nice to see so many children here today. Now for the older children who have a little clipboard and your um, paper to write down notes from the sermon, there is a connection between the story and the sermon. And if you can figure it out, you get a bonus point for me, okay? So I'll have a look at those later if I get a chance. Anyway, thieves and outlaws, only their leader was still at large, and it was this leader who had sworn to have his revenge against the forester. Maria was a Christian. She faithfully read her Bible and prayed, but Grimaud seemed as irreligious as his wife was devout. He laughed at Maria and her prayers for his safety. <clears throat> Don't waste your time praying for me, Maria, for I can certainly take care of myself. All I need is my gun and my dogs, not your silly prayers. But Maria continued to pray for him, asking God to protect him from the outlaw. One evening, Grimes did not come home at the usual time. As the night wore on, Maria became more and more anxious. She couldn't help remembering how the robber had sworn to take her husband's life. Finally, she decided to go ahead and have worship with her mother and young daughter in spite of her fears. She would place her trust in the Lord for her husband's safety. Picking up the large Bible, Maria read aloud from the 71st Psalm, In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Be my rock of refuge. Deliver me, O my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of evil and cruel men. Then the three knelt together, and Maria prayed. Dear Lord, you know Grimes is a proud, is proud, he is but yet a good man, and you know how much we need him. Help him to put his trust in you. Keep him from danger, and have, and Father also bless the robber whom we fear. Have mercy on him and soften his heart. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Just as she finished tucking her daughter into bed, Maria heard footsteps on the path outside. Someone began pounding on the door. Maria, Maria, it's me. Grimes, let me in. She ran to the door. Oh, Grimes, how thankful I am that you're home safely. I've been so worried. and We had prayer for you. Ugh, bah, replied Grimes. It's foolish to waste your time praying for me. Instead, you'd better pray for that, that gun works and that my dogs are alert. That might do some good. Grimes shuttered and fastened each window, vaulted the door, and checked his firearms before going to bed. All was safe and secure in the little cabin. The next morning, as the sun was just beginning to filter through the trees, Grimes got up to build the morning fire. To his great surprise, one of the front windows stood wide open. Then he noticed that Maria's large Bible, which she had left on the table, had disappeared. In its place was a sharp, dangerous-looking knife. I don't understand it, puzzled Grimes. I double-checked those windows last night. I'm positive they were latched. Obviously, someone who had planned murder had been inside the cabin. Everyone searched the house, but they found nothing ex missing except the Bible. Even Grimes had to admit that it was neither his guns nor his dogs that had saved his life. Grimes thought about Maria's Bible during the next few days. He stopped laughing at his wife and gradually began to believe that there might be something to her prayers after all. And after that night, the outlaw who had promised to kill Grimmers simply disappeared. No one heard from him again. Some years later, war broke out and Grimmers enlisted in the army. He soon found himself on the front lines of battle where the fighting raged along a stretch of lake shore, deserted except for some little huts on the water's edge. During the battle, Grimmers was shot he felt a piercing pain in his side. Everything whirled and turned black. When he came to, he was lying on the cold ground, the pain so bad that he couldn't move. The battle had moved on. A little while later, a fisherman ra rowed cautiously toward the shore to see whether his hut had been destroyed in the fighting. Hearing the groans of a wounded soldier, he landed and went to help him. Over here, he called to his companions, this one is still alive. They carried the wounded man to their boat and rowed to the opposite shore of the lake about two miles away. Here, several cottages lay scattered along the water's edge. 
bright blue and yellow flowers bloomed at the doorsteps. Into one of these cottages they carried grimmers. Hurry, Babetta, the fisherman called to his wife. Get some clean bandages and boil some water. We must clean his wound. And so Adolf, the fisherman, and his wife, Babetta, nursed and cared for Grimmers with tender kindness. The fisherman wrote to the forester's family, and soon Maria and her daughter came to be with Grimmers to, no to help nurse him back to health. As he lay in bed, Grimmers thought of the wonderful way his life had been spared after he had been left for dead on the battlefield. He thought, too, of the miraculous way in which God had protected him and his family from the robber that night so long ago. He saw God's hand in it all. And that night, Grimez prayed and asked God to forgive his sins and help him become a Christian. When he became well enough to return home, Grimez thanked the kind fisherman for all that he had done and offered to pay him for the trouble and expense he had caused. But the fisherman would take nothing. Indeed, I owe you much more than you could ever owe me, he told Grimez. Why, how could that be? The forester asked in astonishment. You saved my life. I owe you everything. Adolf went over to the front closet as he spoke. I have a great treasure that I took from you many years ago, and now I wish to give it back. He turned to face them with a large Bible in his hand, but also for me and my hardened heart. As she read and prayed, a strange feeling came over me. It seemed as if an unseen hand was laid upon me to keep me from doing what I had come to do. I only wanted to get that wonderful book and read it for myself. In my haste, I left my knife on the table. For some reason, in even your dogs didn't bark as I fled out the window. For weeks, I hid in the woods near your home and did practically nothing but read your Bible. I saw what a great sinner I was, and like the other thief, the one on the cross, I was forgiven. Then I left that part of the country and became a fisherman. You, Grimez, trusted your guns and dogs, but they couldn't have helped you. God's word saved you. It protected you, and, <coughs> and it also saved you on the battlefield. So don't thank me. Thank God, who through this blessed book saved you and me. Amen. You may go back to your seats. Mm -hmm. 